Well, hi there. I'm here today with one of the coolest animals in the world, which is the panther chameleon. You may recognize the panther chameleon from our video we did head to head with the Cuban false chameleon. If you haven't seen that video before, you can check it out. It's right there. I have been asked, I don't know how many times, when are you going to do a chameleon video? And the truth is, I mean, we deserve it. Our, our logo is a chameleon and yet never to this point have we covered a single chameleon. And I love chameleons. They are arguably the coolest animals on earth. They change color, they've got these crazy hands, they've got prehensile tails, they've got independently moving eyeballs, and this magical tongue that they can shoot out that's like as long as they are. Plus they're active, uh, they're beautiful, and they're interesting, but I have been hesitant to make a video about them because I don't know if I want to recommend them as a pet or not. The reason being that chameleons, even the best of them, are pretty difficult pets to keep. And when I say the best of them, I'm talking about panther chameleons. I can't name a chameleon that is a better pet than the panther chameleon. And they may be the very best pet chameleon, but are they the right pet for you? Overall, we give the panther chameleon a score of 2.6 out of 5. And that's going to come down to our chameleon hand, five categories, which are, I'm going to have to go back to human hands for this one, handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. So let's start with handleability. We give the panther chameleon a score of 3 out of 5. They are probably the most handleable of all chameleons. You can see he's actually quite fantastic as far as handleability goes. They are at some point fairly likely to bite you, but their bite, uh, they're all bluff. They're gonna puff up big, they're gonna have their mouth open. You can honestly stick your hand right in their mouth and a lot of times they won't bite, but they do occasionally come right up and just chomp down on you and it leaves like this diamond shaped imprint on you, but it probably won't even break the skin. Their jaws aren't very powerful. They're slow which is great they're, because they're not very likely to escape from you. I mean, even if they get to the ground, you can pretty easily run down a chameleon. But they do stress with excessive handling. So in addition to the fact that a lot of them don't really like it, and they will probably at least try to bite you at some point, uh, I would keep handling to a minimum with any chameleon, even a, a chameleon that handles as well as the panther chameleon. Not only do they have this awesome prehensile tail that is cool because they can grab stuff with it, but, and you know this matters a lot to me, they can't drop it, and that's just the best. When it comes to care, we give the panther chameleon a score of 2 out of 5. The truth is, you know, it's very doable, but you've got to do it right. And, and so let's begin with the enclosure. They're going to need a screen cage. Uh, they need the ventilation that a screen cage gives, and also chameleons don't like each other. And so when they can see each other all day in glass, reflected, uh, well, it's not really seeing another chameleon, but they don't know that. And that just leads to a very stressful environment for the chameleon and, and not the kind of place that they want to live. Uh, along with that, you're going to put some live or artificial plants in there and a lot of places for them to climb. And they won't drink from a bowl, and so this is going to lead to a lot of care. It's possible that they may come down to a water bowl, but generally they don't really recognize standing water as being a source of, of water. And so you need a dripping system. You can actually drip water in there yourself, or you can get an automatic dripper. You also should mist the cage with a water bottle, a spray bottle every day. But you definitely need to have water droplets. If that water is moving, as long as it's not a continuous stream. If it's a continuous stream, they're going to try to climb on it because they're goofballs. But if you've got individual droplets dripping down, they'll come and they'll drink. And if they don't have that, they can get dehydrated and die, even if there's water available to them in the enclosure. If it's not dripping like that, they're not going to drink. They also eat a lot of live feeders, which means you're going to need a lot of different kinds of live feeders, like crickets, dubia roaches, hornworms, as much diversity as really is possible. 
you'll find that your chameleon may have specific feeder insects that it prefers and definitely you're going to need to dust those with calcium and vitamin supplements. On top of that, they're also going to need UVA, which is heat, and UVB lighting. You know, that's kind of expensive, but we'll get to that later. But they're going to need that in order to develop properly. When it comes to hardiness, we give the panther chameleon a score of 2 out of 5. Males, like this one here, are going to last longer than females. And the reason for this is that females, even if they've never been exposed to a male, begin to lay eggs at a fairly young size, and they put a lot of energy into producing these eggs, and they don't put so much energy into maintaining their own body. And as a result, they tend to crash and die within just a few years. Males still don't live a whole long time, but they do live longer generally than the females will. Despite their pace of life, chameleons definitely live fast and die young. And unfortunately, they do. Uh, all of them, especially females. They're not very resilient. Uh, they don't give you a second chance if you mess up their care. They tend to just die on you. That is the case for chameleons. These are better than most, but still, you've got to get it right, right from the beginning. As I said, even under the best conditions, these guys are only going to live a few years, and that's kind of an expensive lizard, an amazing lizard that you'll be attached to, to have it only live maybe three to six years, somewhere in there. When it comes to availability, we give the panther chameleon a score of 3 out of 5. Honestly, these guys are pretty available anymore. And that's largely due to the fact that they're very, very fecund. I told you females will lay a lot of eggs, and they will. Really, breeding panther chameleons if you've got males and females is very, very simple. The hardest thing is honestly hatching the eggs just because it takes forever. But they will lay mountains of them. So if there's anybody near you who breeds panther chameleons, they're probably really looking to sell a lot of panther chameleons. They're going to be available at expos, like I said, from breeders. Uh, you can definitely get them online. A lot of times they even show up in pet stores. So they're around. They're available also in a wide number of colors, which is funny because even just one individual is available in a wide arrangement of colors that will show up at different times depending on their mood and their temperature and what time of day it is. And they're so fun. But they each one has got kind of a range of colors that they can do and so they can vary from more greens and blues to more reds, yellows, and oranges, all depending on the locality and the morph and just the specific individual that you get, which is really fun. They do change colors. Some people say for camouflage, uh, you'll see him go through a number of colors while we're here, here today, and you'll probably notice that none of these blend in anywhere but maybe a clown convention. Really, the color changing ability of chameleons may have a little bit to do with camouflage, but it has a whole lot more to do with their mood and communication, especially communication with other chameleons they communicate if they're happy, if they're sad, if, if they're grumpy, if they want you to run along, if they're gravid, if they're receptive to matings. They communicate a lot of things, and usually it's not the color of the background. So this particular panther chameleon comes from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, which is a really fantastic reptile and other exotic pet pet store. I told you there are good pet stores and there are bad pet stores, and this is definitely a good pet store. And they keep a wide diversity of amazing pet reptiles, and they even ship in the continental United States. Go by, check them out, say hi, say Clint sent you. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the panther chameleon a score of 3 out of 5. Males are probably going to cost more than females, which is different than most animals that you'll get. Generally, breeders want to keep their females, but the males are so much better as far as pet lizards go. They're more brilliantly colored, their size is better, and they don't crash and die quite as quickly because they don't lay eggs like the females do. Good catch, dude. He's trying to make a break for it. I told you they won't outrun you. And you can see he holds on with this prehensile tail, that's their safety line. Because sometimes they do some pretty silly stuff. It's amazing how far they can reach when they stretch. When we cover veiled chameleons, they seem even more amazing as far as this goes because their body will get real short and then suddenly it'll elongate out. It's just the weirdest thing, they're like a slinky. These guys also use their prehensile tail as an anchor and then reach for stuff, but it just doesn't seem quite as insane when you watch it happen. 
Still pretty good though. Like I said, the lizard itself is going to be moderately expensive. Males are going to cost a little bit more than females, but they make much better pets. And it's unusual that you're ever going to find a female animal that costs less than a male, but the reasons for this are pretty clear. They're not as beautiful and they don't live as long. And so when it comes to panther chameleons, and probably any kind of chameleon, you're going to be able to get females less expensively than males. The enclosure is not inexpensive, but it's also not super expensive. They're going to need a screen cage. Something like the Reptibreeze is a really good one, but a, a nice big one, because this is a fairly large chameleon, and chameleons are very, very active, which is a wonderful thing about chameleons. It really makes them a lot of fun to watch, but it also means they need a lot of space to explore. They're going to need UVA basking lights, and they're also going to need UVB ultraviolet lights so that they can produce vitamin D and not get metabolic bone disease and die on you. Those are expensive and they need to be replaced frequently, so that's definitely a major upfront cost that actually will need to be renewed on a fairly regular basis. I would definitely recommend getting a dripping system, even though it's possible to just get like a cup and poke a hole in the bottom and allow that to drip. You can't forget to do that and it makes it difficult to do things like go on vacation or go away for the weekend because your chameleon is going to need water and it could become dehydrated and die fairly quickly if you're not providing that. So a, a misting system, an automated misting system, is a very good idea with these guys. As always, we have links to all these things down in the description, so feel free to check those out. Once again, we give the panther chameleon, which is possibly the best pet chameleon of all chameleons, a score of 2.6 out of 5. That's not real high, but as you can see, they're a difficult lizard to take care of. I definitely don't recommend them for people without any experience keeping reptiles. You're definitely going to need to understand what all these things are and why they matter so much because they just don't tolerate mistakes well. I would certainly not say these are an easy pet, but they are frankly one of the coolest animals on earth. And so, though they take a lot of work, they're probably worth it. If you can swing it, the panther chameleon is amazing. My, my biggest thought, the thing I really want to leave you with is just do not rush into a pet chameleon of any kind. These are an animal that they're not going to give you a second chance. So get it right the first time. Make sure you've got all your ducks in a row before you bring home a pet chameleon. As always, like and subscribe and we hope to see you real soon. Oh, look at those colors. You're getting some of your reds back in. They'll turn black a lot of times when they're cold because that helps them warm up more rapidly. Oh, there we're getting a little bit of that defensive open mouth. You can see they're all bluff, but they will tell you when they're not happy with being handled so much. To our five categories. Handleability, care, availability, and nerds. <coughs> Are you trying to do the, the thing? <laughs> yeah. You're not doing it right. What thing? <laughs> the thing. Not live long and prosper. Chameleon hand. Oh, is that what that is? Okay. I <laughs> 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 I'm with it now. <laughs> well, hi there. Amazing. <laughs> Look at these colors right now. Uh, amazing. Oh, they're different on each side. Blues. Reds. All right. Oh, look at that pose. That's a dandy. Has he bitten you yet? No, I've been bit by chameleons before, though. It's hilarious. Okay. When it comes to availability... Whoa! His weird fingers. What, what kind of fingers does he have again? Clint? And what's funny, so he's got, he's got two clusters, right? He's got a cluster of three and a cluster of two. And on the front... It's this way, and on the back, it's this way. Let's see if I got that straight. I did! I nailed it! Alright. Karen's on camera! <laughs> got her. There she is! We got her! <laughs> oh wait, she's in charge of editing now, so... I will chop right. that <laughs> At least we got a piece of her soul. <laughs> yeah. Right side. <laughs>